communities. Defend our climate. Defend our communities. Defend our climate. Defend our communities. Politicians work for you. You are the boss. You don't need to throw this away. You are the leaders here. The citizens of Canada, the citizens of the world, of the globe, are the bosses. Um, I wasn't going to read anything, but I just wanted to say that I've heard some people say that climate change is not a reality. It's a natural thing that happens in cycles on planet Earth. And I don't happen to believe that, but even if we don't look at that, pollution is part of all the whole thing. And if you can't breathe, on this planet, you can't drink the water and eat the food. I mean, nobody can deny that that's a huge problem as well. And I just want to add that too. My name is Dick Abdi. I'm the president of London Multicultural. And uh, my background is from Somalia. And uh, if you know, uh, climate change is something goes to my heart and uh, my people and a few years ago in Africa, especially East Africa, it was a lot of things happening about the famine, the dry, that's part of the climate change. And that's I'm affected, affected my parents, affected my family, affected about my roots. This government doesn't pay attention about climate change. And, and, and this is... Uh, because it's a lot of things happen around the world and it's affecting a lot of human life. Thank you very much, Dick. Uh, I'd just like to read one thing that uh, from, from the report that uh, I think is relevant exactly to what you're saying about Somalia and Rwanda and uh, Darfur is for the major crops, wheat, rice, and maize in tropical and temperate regions, climate change without adaptation is projected to negatively impact production for local temp temperature increases of two degrees Celsius or more above the late 20th century levels, although individual locations may uh, benefit. So, I mean, th th this is exactly what they're talking about, is what's happening in Eastern Africa there or uh, not just there, but around the world. I'm Lila. Um, the environmental movement is something that I'm very passionate about, and the uh, lack of action is something that just angers me right to my soul. And when I look around at my community, I wonder why I don't see so much action, and I wonder why other people aren't feeling the way that I do. And so when I look around to what everybody else is doing, I see nobody talking about climate change. And I think, well, maybe it's not okay for me to talk about to this to my peers. And so I want to challenge everybody to have those conversations, to talk to your family, to talk to your coworkers, to, to start bringing this conversation up as a regular occurrence. Because I think until we start seeing everybody else engaging in this, until we look out and we see everybody else is concerned about this, I should be concerned about this too, it's not going to catch on and we're not going to make a difference. And we will stay that minority that doesn't talk about what's going on. So that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, Lila. Make people read. Where are One of the things that really strikes me in this report is the talk about uh, the economy. So it says that throughout the 21st century, climate change impacts are projected to slow down economic growth, make poverty reduction more difficult, like it was easy before, further erode food security, and prolong existing and create new poverty traps our current government is always talking about the economy. The economy is their number one issue. But climate change is connected to the economy. And if they're not addressing that issue, then that's a major problem and a major flaw in their planning. And so I think we have to ask those questions. We have to say to them, well, if you really care about the economy, what about these particular impacts that are going to be the result of climate change and the result of us not seeking climate justice? You know, as you can all tell, I'm going to have a child and I'm thinking about what kind of world they're going to live in. And Naomi Klein said, what the fossil fuel industry is doing is locking us into a future that we cannot survive. We are headed towards four to six degrees of warming because of the carbon poised to be put into the atmosphere. And that is completely unsurvivable. And I want us to think about that and how 
not surviving should not be an option. We want uh, our, our planet, we want our lives, but we're going to have to step up. And this is the hardest thing we're ever going to have to do. But I look to people like Bill McKibben, uh, Naomi Klein, uh, Sephora Berman, who's coming Monday night to talk about climate change. These are the people we should be listening to. David Suzuki, everybody is talking about this, except the mainstream media. Because they are funded by fossil fuels. And the fossil fuel industry, the, the, the best way that we can deal with them is divestment. And divestment means that we stop investing in fossil fuels. Um, you, there's a lot of groups that are doing this. Western has a divestment group, but we really have to step up the pressure on fossil fuel industry. And it's hard, and it's really going to get harder, to, and, and, but we need to do it. And I really thank you all for being here today. You have to live it. You have to live it. You can, you know, you can beg and plead for people who are making profits off of doing the wrong thing that don't really care, where we have to make a big, big statement for them to even notice or consider that we might do something on our own. But realistically, every dollar that they have comes from us. Every dollar comes from every single person that walks on the planet, right? The decisions that you make, you know, you can take the pessimistic standpoint that that what you do doesn't matter that much if you buy this or that oh well you know what change can I make but if you feel that way then why are you here today right I think a lot of you don't feel that way do you you feel like empowered you feel like you can make a difference right yeah. Yeah. Do more. so so the most important thing I think to take away from all this is like sure you know we can back Harper and we can talk about like you know how he got voted in right we can talk about, oh, maybe this politician or that politician will fix the problem. But they're all really wealthy people, and they all have investments in stocks, and those things are profitable. You know what's not profitable? None of the things we're talking about. Nothing we're talking about is profitable. Maybe a small percentage of it, right? But if you make personal decisions in your life to use less energy, to do things ethically, to do things the best, it takes a lot of effort. It is, it is. And it takes a lot of personal responsibility, and it can, uh, there can be some cognitive dissonance when someone, you know, points, well, you know, what are you driving? What do you wear? What do you eat? What do you drink out of? What are your choices in life? And that can be hard to take that criticism. So if you take personal accountability for your own actions, if you do things that you find to be ethical, then there will be a change. There will be a change. Begging rich people to do it for us, I, I mean, not to discount anything anybody else has said, but I just, I don't think that's the fastest way. I think the fastest way is to take personal accountability. Right? Be the change you wish to see.